Oh, it's you. I got his letter. Uh, hello, hello. John Marston. Education is the most wonderful thing. It'll raise us higher and higher. Make civics and ethics less a work of uh, dirty-minded pragmatists like me. And the calling of higher, better men. Hear, hear. Without it, we are savages. But with learning, why, in 50 years, man will put down his guns and start living a life of relentless purity. Hear, hear. <laughs> but the rich can be so very self-absorbed. <sighs> How can uh, I help? You can't. We need all our strengths. That's the point. We've gone over this. Violence is never right. I agree with you. But it's not violence. It's the mere threat of violence. Against whom? Oh. <laughs> Against Hector Fellow's worst nature. To convince him to make good on his promise to help finance the library. Who is he and where do I find him? He's a newspaper man. Oh. And he's... He's a leaving town on a coach, heading to his country estate, because he doesn't like your heavy-handed approach. And he's gonna really hate my heavy-handed approach. Thank you, Mr. Marston. You'll spot him on the road through the bayou. He has a red coach. So we are clear. I do not approve of this behavior. Stop the coach! Who the heck are you? Hey, hold it! I'm getting in! What the hell do you want? Mr. Fellows, ain't it? Charity, sir. An appeal to your better nature. This is most impudent. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not most impudent. Trust me, buddy. I can be a whole lot more impudent than this. But this is for a great cause. And for a wealthy man such as yourself, a chance to add some dignity to all that wealth. Dignity? To help finance a library in town. Just think of the prestige. Oh, get out of my carriage. But the mayor... Mayor? <laughs> The mayor is a crook. <laughs> Me too. And I'm a real crook. I will not be bullied by you, sir. Get out of here. Ah! I'm sorry. Was that... Yes. I would like to finance the library for the common good. Ah! I can't hear you. 
Certainly, in the case of a beaten, I know that to be true. The mayor awaits your check, sir. Been a pleasure. There's a good man in there. You should let him live a little more. Driver! Hold up! As you were. Move on! Hey, boy. What can I do for you? A room for tonight, please. Okay, room is all set. Just head upstairs when you're ready. Bonjour. Beg your pardon, miss. Walking ain't tricky. Bonjour. My apologies. Careful, dear. This here is a real man's game. It's you. Come in. Where's... what's his name? Jean-Marc, he's a little histrionic. 
I'm worried that he's going to open his mouth and say things that aren't true to those vulgar Puritans at the newspaper. Well, perhaps true, but not the whole truth. Uh. <laughs> Look at these beautiful books. This is magnificent. We'll bring this city back to life if it kills me, and it probably shall. Yeah? Ah, I have two copies of this book. This is an old field guide. Might be of some interest to you, maybe not. But please have it. It's worth quite a bit. Thank you. My pleasure. Listen, Mr. Marston, I'm sorry to ask this of you. You've done so much, but... Go on. Jean-Marc, I'm afraid he's going to open his mouth and say things. How do you mean? Uh, saying nasty things about the work that we have done together, for example. Uh, is that my business? Oh, no, no. <laughs> of course not. He also found out some unsettling news about you. It's all scurrilous lies, of course. But... What sort of news? Oh, I do not talk about idle gossip. Please, I'm a public servant, and we are friends. Where do I find him? Well, he does live over on uh, Rue de Zachary. Thank you, Mr. Marston. Why you want to say those awful things about me, buddy? <laughs> Best not make a drama of things. Come on, let's see your boss. This is gonna hurt, but it's for the best.
Ross, bring him round the back. Oh, Jean-Marc, Jean-Marc, uh, I've missed you. Uh, I've missed you. What silly, silly man we have been. Jean-Marc, well, we've been so... Uh, I promised to change. I know. Ah, uh, what a silly, silly misunderstanding. You see, the problem is principles will destroy us all. Sure. As long as you two are friends again. Yes. And you say you've changed, so we will run the city like men of honor, like you said. Uh, of course, of course. We, we will strive to improve the city's moral backbone by any means available to us. Within reason, yes. Yes, yes. Within my reason. Because I am the mayor, Jean-Marc. And I will save you from yourself. Because it's better to get something done than nothing at all, like you said. Utterly, utterly corrupted, Lemieux. You've not changed at all. I've been supplanted in your esteem by a wanted murderer. You... you shame me. <laughs> no, sir. You shame me with your vain naivete. Oh, how I long for the luxury to have principles such as you. But I must actually do things. I see now. You're... you're lost to reason. Yeah. And I see now that you're a horrible little wretch and a sinner yourself. Your sin is deluded vanity. Now, sir, I am afraid that you must kill him. I will pay you handsomely. And Jean-Marc, I will miss you. I really shall. Kill him. It must be so. You're not really going to kill me, are you? Thought I might. But uh, all I did was love too much. Look, My duty. That you run in your mouth. I'll leave Thought you out of friends it. And him He'll and... betray you just like he's betrayed me. Lemieux is a foul rat. But I'm a man of my word. Let me live and I'll, I'll. I'll destroy him. And I'll make sure you're left well alone. Come on. Please. Please. Come on. You want to shoot a sad little man, would you? The mayor's orders is the mayor's orders, see? You should have stayed in line. I might be a brute, but I'm not a paid killer. Get out of here and don't mention me, boy. You're a good man. <laughs> 